Dr. Fauci, Fauci busted. Yeah, 3,200 emails released by BuzzFeed. 3,000. 200 pages of emails he received from January to June of 2020. The emails were from his team, celebrities, even Mark Zuckerberg chimed in about a building, or building rather, a coronavirus information hub on Facebook. Well, here's a couple articles talking about the emails. Talking about from January to June of last year, 2020, okay? So thousands of private emails from U.S. infectious disease chief, Dr. Anthony Fauci, also known as Tony Fauci, has revealed the concern and confusion at the start of the pandemic. So what did we learn from it? Says the National Institute of Health and Specialists with a career expanding of seven U.S. presidents, Dr. Fauci, at 80 years old, became the face of the nation's COVID-19 response and has since been the subject of both uh, effusive... A few, I've never seen that word before, actually, in my whole life. <laughs> Effusive, I don't know what that means, praise, and ferocious criticism. Uh, anyway, uh, sorry for mispronouncing it. Anyway, it says there are over 3,000 pages, a total of 3,200 total, uh, obtained by Washington Post. Uh, BuzzFeed is, I think, the original source that it went through. Um I guess I'm not sure how they're able to do this. I don't know. I guess are all of our v emails vulnerable to be released to the public under the Freedom of Information Act? I don't know. that. But right here what it says is it wasn't an, a hack, right? Dr. Fauci didn't get hacked, right? This is under the Freedom of Information Act. April of 2020, an email from the director of the National Institute of Health, which he works for, uh, Francis Collins, Nudge Dr. Fauci with the subject line, Conspiracy Gains Momentum. The doctor's response to this full uh, redacted, fully redacted. Uh, it says this uh, May, Dr. Fauci said uh, he is not convinced the virus originated naturally and expressed support and in investigation. So this is, this is kind of an example. See, I don't see... Something that originated in a lab, in my personal opinion, probably wouldn't have a 99% survival rate. If somebody modified something in a lab, probably most of the population would be dead right now or severely affected. Um, a 99%, a 98% to 99% survival rate doesn't really... Um, yeah, I think you guys get the idea. So, but what I'm saying is, is now they're spinning. I mean, even Rand Paul, who's a Senator who I've admired for a long time, even he is pushing a lot of all the, now they're pushing this new conspiracy theory that says, oh, Hey, it originated possibly in, in Wuhan and NIH funded a Wuhan lab. And I don't believe any of that. And I'm not going to regurgitate that conspiracy theory nonsense because there is no evidence beyond a reasonable doubt of what this is, where it came from. Some might, there are some people who would argue that, um, you know, they would ask the question, is this a virus? Uh, some people would ask that. What I'm saying is, is that if you guys take a look at this, you judge for yourself, you decide for yourself, but try to really guard your heart and your mind if you're religious, you should pray before you read things like this so that you can ask God to give you discernment and help you to see the silver lining and read in between the lines with that level of understanding and discernment. Because there's a lot of deception going around right now and it's hard to know, you know, heads from tails, it's hard to know what's what. You know what I mean? There's just so much misinformation and it's divide, conquer, and just distraction. While the left hand's busy over here, the right hand is busy pickpocketing you. You understand? So that sleight of hand, but it, this is a, a mental game. This is, this is a, a mind F in every way. Anyway, check it out, ladies and gentlemen. I'll post a, a couple links. Take a look. Tell me what you think. Please comment below, and I'll check you all in the next one. Why did Trump put him in charge of this? Think about that.